So a new study found the first evidence of microplastics actually inside of penis tissue. And scientists think that could be impacting male fertility. In reality, microplastics are all over our bodies. They've already been found in blood and in sperm, and so it makes sense that they would also be in penises. But what are they doing there, and how bad is it for our health? I'm Hilary Brick, and I cover health at Business Insider. Microplastics were found in a deep tissue inside the penis called the corpus spongiosum, and uh, the surgeon tells me this is largely what's responsible for erections. So he's wondering, is there some sort of connection between these plastics and the dysfunction? Broadly speaking, the definition of a microplastic is basically any piece of plastic that's less than five millimeters wide. So this can mean just about anything can become a microplastic or be a microplastic. So there were two types of plastic that were the most common that the researchers found in this study, and those were PET, which is used in a lot of food packaging, and polypropylene, which is used to make bottle caps, like water bottle caps. These microplastics are not something you're gonna see with the naked eye. They're between 20 and 500 micrometers wide, so that's like maybe one or two hairs. The sample size for this study was pretty small. It was done on six men all living in Miami and all struggling with erectile dysfunction. And five of the men had microplastic in their penises, but interestingly, one did not. He's an older guy, a Cuban guy who lives in Miami, and you know, he doesn't do that much takeout. He kind of lives a traditional life. He doesn't really use plastic water bottles that much, kind of drinks from a cup and eats from a plate. It seems kind of counterintuitive that an older person would have less plastic in their body because they've had more time to swallow plastic, but this is a trend other researchers have also found. So there's something perhaps about our modern way of living that is contributing to the fact that there's more microplastic in our bodies. The two main ways that scientists think that we are getting microplastics inside of us are either by swallowing them or inhaling them. So either from the air or from eating, drinking something. So it goes into your digestive tract and then it travels down into your gut. And then once it's in your gut, it gets processed and it can enter the bloodstream. And that's when it can just really go just about anywhere in your body, including in testicles, not just penises, but also semen, blood, the gut, the brain. It's a little bit difficult to quantify how much microplastic is in our body, but one recent study suggested our intake of microplastics has increased sixfold since 1990. This is a trend that's expected to only continue. Our global consumption of plastic is expected to triple by 2060. So, it's not like you can identify one source of microplastics. They really are everywhere in everything. Microplastics are present in foods we eat and drinks we consume. So if you go out for a to-go coffee, there's a little plastic film inside your cup. If you eat from a takeout container, it's probably coated with a shiny coating. The slice of pizza comes on a piece of paper that might have some little microplastics that you eat in your pizza. If you drink water, that can also have microplastics in it, either from the bottle cap, it might pop off and get in there. Another place that microplastics come from is the clothes we wear and when we do laundry. So these little micro fibers, all these sort of new and often improved fabrics that can stretch and do various things, when they get washed, those microfibers will come out of them. There's a lot of microplastic in the air we breathe as well. It's incorporated into the household dust. It's really kind of impossible to act like we could ever get away from microplastics. There are so many different chemicals inside of microplastics. There's like more than 13,000, but I will mention a few of the most common. One of them is BPA or bisphenol A. BPA is one of these endocrine disrupting chemicals that can confuse our hormones and scientists have shown that it can lead to more cancer or more obesity, hyperactivity, decreased immunity and ability to fight off infections. So it's one of these 
hormone disrupting chemicals that can impact the way our body functions. BPA was phased out of baby bottles a few years ago in 2013, and it's been increasingly phased out of the linings of cans. The FDA says that the level of BPA we're exposed to in things like food packaging is safe, but the research on this is still in its infancy. Another chemical inside microplastics is PFAS. You might have heard of these called forever chemicals. PFAS are a broad class of chemicals that are used in all kinds of things from raincoats to Teflon to firefighting foam and food packaging. PFAS are useful because they repel water and so you can waterproof things or make things more leak-proof or non-stick. And while they're really good at resisting grease and fire and rain, they are also really good at sticking around forever. That's why they're called forever chemicals. And they are also endocrine disruptors, so they mess with the normal functioning of our hormones and can cause some health problems. They have been linked with lower birth rates, lowered immunity, some obesity in children, and also cancers, including testicular cancer. Another type of chemical is called phthalates, and these are really flexible, pliable plastics. Independent experts are concerned about phthalates because there's evidence they can influence reproductive development, leading to more allergies, issues with development, like more cases of ADHD, lower IQs, impacting brain development, but also specifically for men, that it might be tied to lower testosterone and by having an anti-androgenic effect on the body. Another plastic is PET. This is the stuff that a lot of bottles and bottle caps are made from. There's concerns that that, when it gets really hot, like above 100 degrees, can leach out some toxic chemicals. That there could be harmful effects over time leaching out of those bottles and bottle caps. The bottom line is whatever kind of plastic you're using, it probably has some kind of chemical in it that has some kind of impact on your hormones and your health. But there are a few things you can do to avoid microplastics. I've interviewed a lot of experts about microplastics over the years, and the one thing that everyone says is do not microwave your plastic. That's because when the plastic heats up, it gives all those chemicals and potentially toxic things a chance to leach out into the food you're eating or the thing you're drinking. My second tip for avoiding microplastics is to try to avoid plastic takeout containers, plastic water bottles, and to-go cups when you can. Just getting away from those and cooking more at home when you can is really one of the best ways to avoid microplastic in your food. The third tip that I talk to experts about is to vacuum regularly, ventilate your house, because a lot of microplastic gets into the dust in our house, and so if your house is less dusty, less chance for you to be inhaling microplastics. Some of the scientists I talk to are most concerned about some of the skincare that we use. All of those artificial scents and fragrances that are in there can have a lot of phthalates in them. So they recommend trying to avoid super scented things and trying to pick out more natural fibers when you can and when the price is agreeable because a lot of those synthetic materials that we wear have a lot of plastic chemicals in them. This last tip is one that pretty much any health expert will tell you for anything, and it's wash your hands before you eat. Getting the germs and the microplastics off your hands will help keep more of them out of your body. These plastics aren't just passing through us and you know going out the other end. They might be causing some damage while they're inside. One of the leading microplastics researchers, Tracy Woodruff at the University of California, San Francisco, told me that she really feels like we're at an inflection point with microplastics where we're starting to learn more and more about them, where they are and what they're doing in our bodies. And she feels like this should really be a rallying moment for people to, and regulators, to step up and start to regulate the plastic industry much in the way that cigarettes were regulated in the 1960s.